Hi everyone and welcome to our second heart screencast. We're going to talk today about the control of heart function. And why can a heart keep beating if you take it outside of the body? Well, it's all about the special tissues that we find in the heart. So heart cells can beat as long as there's energy present the heart can keep beating. And if, there, if this beating wasn't coordinated, the heart cells would all beat randomly and um, the heart wouldn't be able to function properly. So how does the heart coordinate this pumping action? Well, there's two spots in the heart that are made of special tissue. Both of those nodes are in the right atrium. There's the SA node at the top of the right atrium and the AV node right by the AV valve. And this special tissue is made up of muscle cells that are combined with nerve cells. So the heart can make itself beat. And this is completely independent of the brain and any other stimuli. The heart just beats on its own. So we'll start by talking about the SA node. It's called the sinoatrial node. It's found along the wall of the upper right atrium. And it fires about every 0.85 seconds or 72 times per minute. And it causes the the atria to contract. So when the SA node fires, the right atrium and the left atrium will contract. At the same time, it sends an impulse down what we call the bundle of hiss. That's these spots here towards the next node, the AV node. So the atria contract, and the message travels to the AV node. So when the SA node fires, the atria contract. Now the SA node is also known as the pacemaker and that's because it sets the pace of the heartbeat and if you have an irregular heartbeat you may have to have an artificial pacemaker inserted into your body. It's just a small electronic device and it tells the SA node when to fire about 72 times every minute depending on the person. So this is what an actual pacemaker looks like and they can insert it through the vena cava and right into your right atrium and they don't have to do any open heart surgery to do this. So it's a pretty cool fix for a very serious problem. The next node, the AV node, is found right by the AV valve or the tricuspid valve and it's connected to what we call the Purkinje fibers which you can see go down and around each of the ventricles. So it goes down the septum and up each of the ventricles. And when the AV node fires, after it's received the impulse from the SA node, it causes the ventricles to contract. And because the ventricles are so large, that's why we need the message to travel down the Purkinje fibers as well and up the sides of those muscular walls of the heart. And when the AV node fires, the Purkinje fibers help it to cause the ventricles to contract. Now when the SA node fires, it causes the atria to to pump from the top of the atria to the bottom and that causes blood to move down into the ventricles. When the ventricles are squeezing, they're squeezing from the bottom to the top because that's how the Purkinje fibers are arranged. And so of course you want blood to move up into that pulmonary trunk and into that aortic arch. When you go to the hospital and you're having issues with your heart, they'll usually hook you up to an ECG or an EKG machine. And I'm sure you've seen all the shows that look like this, where you see the heart beating, and then of course the person doesn't make it and they get a flat line. That's all done on an ECG machine. And when you look at an ECG, you'll notice that the different parts of the ECG that are recorded are represented by letters P represents the atria contracting, QRS represents the ventricles contracting, and T is the recovery of the heart. So there's two parts to the contraction of the heart then, the atria contract and the ventricles contract. That's represented by that lub-dub sound that you hear when you're listening to your heart beat. And what the EKG electrocardiogram is measuring or registering is the voltage changes that happen across the surface of the heart as it beats. So let's take a look at those individually. P represents the SA node firing and the atria contracting. So if you look here, there's the P. It's the first little hill. QRS is represented by the AV node and Purkinje fibers firing and the ventricles contracting. And that's that large spike, QRS. 
and T represents the ventricles recovering, resting, and getting ready for the next contraction. And that is shown with that second little hill, so PQRS and T. So make sure you know this diagram and can draw it. You see the pressure is on one side, time is on the bottom, and you need to know that P is representing the atria contracting, URS is representing the ventricles contracting. When we say atria contract, we call that atrial systole. Systole means contract, and when the ventricles contract, we call that ventricular systole the contraction of the ventricles. And during T, that's ventricular diastole, which is just the ventricles at rest. And during QRS, that's actually when the atria are resting, and that's atrial diastole as well. So systole means contract, diastole means rest. And the space between one ventricular contraction and the second ventricular contraction is about one second in the span of time. So if you look at a normal EKG and one that from a person that has tachycardia, that means they have a really fast heart rate over 100 beats per minute. Ventricular fibrillation is when the ventricles are all uncoordinated, so it would look something like this. And of course if you had a heart block, which is your ventricles aren't being stimulated after each atrial stimulation. So let's talk now about fibrillation. Now the SA node is the pacemaker of your heart and what happens when your the system breaks down and everything's all uncoordinated the SA node will actually send a strong shock through the heart in the attempt to reset itself that's called defibrillation that's a natural process when your heart tries to fix itself Now we can also do this artificially if people are in cardiac arrest so we use a defibrillator and you try to resuscitate a person bring them back to life so how is the brain involved in all of this? If the heart doesn't need the brain to cause it to beat, how is the brain involved? Well, usually uh, the heart will cause itself to beat about 72 times per minute, but there's a nerve in the brain called the vagus nerve. It's the cranial nerve number 10, comes off the brain and attaches to the body, and it's connected to the SA node of the heart. And there's two types of nerves that are connected to the heart, sympathetic nerves and parasympathetic nerves. Now the sympathetic nerves are involved with fight or flight. When you're in a time of stress and your body needs your heart to beat faster, then the brain will connect with the sympathetic nerves to increase the heart rate. Now after the stress is over, your parasympathetic nerves through the vagus nerve will bring your heart back to normal and slow it down. So your brain will get involved when it needs to speed up or slow down that rate of the heart. Brain is definitely the boss. So that's all under the control of what we call the autonomic nervous system. That's You don't have to think about it, it's not conscious, it just happens inside your body. So the sympathetic nervous system in times of stress will accelerate your heart rate increase the speed of your heart rate and the parasympathetic system will inhibit the heart and relax it after times of stress. And that's all controlled by a special part in your brain called the medulla oblongata which is just above the spinal cord. It's the most ancient or primitive part of our brains. But that's the part of your brain that will help to control circulation in times of stress or when relaxation is needed. But under normal circumstances the heart controls itself, it tells itself when to beat, and that's done through the SA node or the pacemaker. So make sure you come to class next day with all of your hot questions about the heart and how it beats.